Flying is kinda essential part of Rocket League. It was invented even before we got to know Sarp's successor. I don't know who invented it, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that it's very important. Do you know that our field consists of ceiling, floor and four walls, right? We don't realize that almost 90% of space in the capsule is air and we need to learn how to use it properly. If you take a look at the RLCS players, you will see that they are keeping the ball up almost all the time. Why though? It's because it's harder to be consistent in the air and they are waiting for their opponents to miss or just make the bad decision. That's why you need to do it correctly, because your opponents in an Ragnarok adventure will do exactly the same. Today I'm gonna teach you how to do it properly. We're gonna discuss about process of learning it, prediction about ball positions, so you can use less boost to make the same turn, decisions, when to go for a ball in the air and when not, and most importantly, best ways to do it. First thing you have, going as fast as possible. I know that going into air isn't a hard thing to do, but going fast into air is complicated, mostly for beginners. Simply, to make aerial, you need to start boosting, immediately jump after it, after first jump, direct nose of your car towards the ball or ceiling if you want to just go fast, and after adjusting your angle, jump again. Again, it's very important. Sounds easy, but is it? Yes and no. For a few first tries, your muscle memory will have access error and you will backflip back to bronze. And after more than 100 tries, you will make it in an acceptable way. But don't worry, it's just beginning and that's normal. Now you know the way to do it, one of many many ways. I just told you the scenario when the ball is rather in front of you and you won't do aerial this way if the ball is centrally above you or just behind you. If you conquer this kind of scenario, best way to do it is just jump once, quickly turn nose of your car upwards and then start to boost and jump back again of course. If the ball is behind you, do the same, but try to turn nose of your car more to the back instead of pointing it centrally up. This will allow you to go straight up or straight back and you won't make unnecessary turns during aerial. It's very important to try to make it straight up because if you are making corrects during it, you will use more boost and you won't be as fast as you could be. Of course, you won't do it perfectly from the beginning. I mean, you will need to make many many corrects during areas, cause you are just learning. But knowing what's good and bad already at the start will speed up the process of going for areas. Now, when you know how to do it correctly, we need to say something about learning how to predict the path the ball will go. As I said, if you will go in straight line to the ball, the path will be shorter and boost will thank you. So, if you want to go in straight line, you need to predict where the ball will be in next 2 to 3 seconds. How to do it? Is it really possible? Yes, it's possible if you have trained it before. So the best way to learn predicts is get to use to them. You have a lot of training packs connected with aerials. This one is my favorite one. It has many various type of shots and if you will connect it with base mode you will have many possibilities. Like this shot. As you see, it's rather easy to do but this type of shots are crucial in case of prediction where the ball will go. I think it's the best way to learn it. This way I learned it when I was just a small child in Rocket League. Next thing in our list is taking control of your car in the air so it won't jiggle in front and back. It's as important as you don't know. Let me tell you, did you have this weird thing on the ground when you want to dribble the ball but you couldn't feel the car and you were turning too much in the left and too much in the right? That's exactly what you need to improve in the air. Alright, we have achieved knowledge about mechanical things. Now let's focus on things that we need to understand. When should you go for the ball? It depends. If you see that your opponent is going for an aerial shot, you should take a good position on the ground and just wait for him to shot. If you see that the ball is going up and nobody is going for it, you can go. Either you will force a 50 on your opponent or just make an aerial shot pass whatever you are going for. Next situation, when you aren't sure if your teammate will go from behind you for the ball, it's better just to wait a couple of seconds. I can't tell you all the possible scenarios, but I think those three are just most common. The biggest problem with aerials is that you need to take action immediately. You can't hesitate. You need to estimate if you can go and if you can profit from it. Beauty of his ability is possibilities. Flashy goals, very fast bangers. You need to learn it if you haven't yet, because you will benefit a lot from those shots. Remember, it's only a game. Bye bye.